This is part one of my video build series, how to convert the A8 A8 into the AM8. And we're starting right now. Hello, my name is Daniel. Welcome to the Crosslink channel. I would like to help you being more successful with 3D printing. And if you're here for the first time, subscribe and hit the bell notification so you don't miss anything. So this is the start of a multi-part series about how to convert the a a into, into the AM8. I'm gonna document the whole process for you. So this is going to be a longer build and it's gonna be chunked into several videos. And at the end of these series of videos, I'm gonna make a final video about a conclusion, uh, giving you a shorter overview of the whole build process and also going to be in depth about the build quality, the print quality and print speed improvements that you can expect. So to build the AM8, you will need a metal frame. Usually you can build this in several different ways. So there's different documentations out there. I've linked a few of them in the description down below because we're gonna need them in the build process. But there is a new version of the AM8 that uh, is on Thingiverse, which was made by Future is Maker. And he's one of my first followers on this channel and he suggested why don't you build this frame and it's all screwed together and there's only a, just a few uh, plastic parts that hold the frame together compared to the usual AM8 versions which have a lot of plastic parts holding the frame together so I like the idea and that's why we're using this newer version of the AM8 build I've linked it down in the description below so there is a page on Thingiverse where Futurist Maker describes the build process and what parts you will need and he is also offering to prepare all those parts for people who are interested so you can contact him and ask him if he can send you a frame kit for a decent price and uh, that's what I did so I got the frame kit here and we're gonna unbox it now so let's see what's in the box I expect this is going to be the rails and the metal parts and some screws um, to mount it all together so let's see what's inside So we have these metal extruders and he was so kind to number them for me. So we have a kit of screws and also, yeah, very nice. We have these T-nuts here. So this is it, um, all the parts. Um, or here also on the Thingiverse page is really the case um, which is really nice all the parts that you can see numbered here uh, Correspond to the Thingiverse steps and also to the Thingiverse pictures Which is really nice and gonna make it very easy to mount this all together So these two screws which have been tapped into the side of this uh, extrusion they're gonna slide into this other extrusion so now since this is now sliding in this uh in this extrusion you might be wondering how to fix this into position and the clever idea here is that you have two holes here i hope you can see them these holes here are exactly at the position where this needs to be fixed so you just slide the lower part here until you see the screws so you see i can just put my hex wrench here through the hole and then tighten the screw which is pretty clever i think it's a pretty good idea Okay, final part of the bottom frame. So this is the crossbar that needs to be inserted here on top and we need to fix it now. So now the frame mount is basically done. The only thing left is to fix the upper, so the vertical part with this bracket here. Okay, good. So this frame is, is basically done. Um, I also put these bumpers here in the corners so it's really standing uh, flush on the surface and it reduces the vibrations that's gonna be transferred to any kind of surface where it's standing. So I decided that everything that I need to uh, mount parts to the frame or hold the frame together is gonna be printed in PETG, not PLA, because I wanted a strong material that's still a little bit flexible so it doesn't break because it's brittle. So now it's time to disassemble the a 8 because everything that's coming now is gonna need parts from the a 8 
So one thing I recognized when uh, disassembling this, um, the linear bearings of the Y-axis carriage are pretty much broken, I would say. So they are wasted. I have to replace them. And let's finish the disassembly and then put the Y-axis back onto the new frame. So that's the disassembly. Everything that we're gonna reuse is now on the table. So have a look at all these parts. It's basically everything that has some electronic purpose or is a mechanical part. All the plastic frame parts are gone and we are starting now to reintegrate everything into the new AM8 frame. So the first thing I'd like to do is to replace all the linear bearings and all parts that have linear bearings. So you heard it before, they are pretty much done, they are pretty loud and probably cause some vibrations in your prints. And the easiest way to do this is to take something like this uh, wrench here, which is, has a flat uh, surface, so we don't want to scratch anything, and you insert it in this little slot here on the side of the, of the bearing holder, and then you turn it just a little bit so the bearing is, is released, and then hold it and shake it out. So probably this is gonna work. So we can also pull it a little bit, so it's not hard. What we do next is we take these new Igus bearings, which are from made from plastic, and we just reinsert them into this bearing holder until they click into their designated position. And that's it, basically. By the way, I've linked all the replacement parts that I'm using in the description down below. So if you use those links, I'm gonna get a little bit of a kickback and thanks for supporting the channel using those links. Now, finally, once you've replaced the bearings, make sure that the rods run smoothly. So just by pushing them through and testing if there's any play or if there's any higher resistance than necessary, so the next step is to remount the Y-axis frame using the, the horizontal rods and the rod holders. So you wanna bring everything into position and then measure the distances to each corner so they are equal. And then finally, if you find additional friction, you can just add silicon spray. Now, one additional thing that I wanna point out is that I chose another way to mount the motor. So I chose a vertical motor mount. My hope with this new mount is that there is less stress to the belt, so the belt runs more straight uh, underneath the bed, but we'll see once we finish it, so I'm uh, just gonna test it out. And here on the other side, you see this is the mount for the belt tensioner. What I also like about this different way to mount it is the new way how the belt slides in underneath the bed, so it's really fixed. Next is to mount the Z-axis motor mounts and also the motors. And then we're mounting the Z-axis rod holder. Sliding in the Z-axis rod and fixing it in the motor mount. And then finally inserting the lead screws and fixing them. Now I'm sliding the X carriage over the rods And if you find additional friction there, uh, you can just also use silicon spray to make it uh, run a little bit smoother. So from a mechanical point of view, the frame is built. And what's missing now is installing the belts and the electronics to get this printer running and that's the next part in this video series. So as soon as it's released, it's gonna be linked in this card and watch out for that video next week. So I hope to see you soon on this channel for the AM8 build series part two. Until then, I wish you a good week. Happy 3D printing, bye bye. <music>